What's up, everybody? So, yesterday we looked at Acts chapter 14, uh, verses 8 through 11. And so today, my goal is to just go a little bit backwards, or, or start back where we started yesterday, to get the context of our the rest of this account in Acts chapter 14. So, hey, when you guys hop on, why don't you uh, wave hi and let us know you're there. I'm seeing... Arlo Christie and some others hopping in here. So, chapter 14, verse 8. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength and in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul observed him intently, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. So that's where we got started yesterday. Now, verse 11, it says, Now when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying... In the Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice uh, with the multitudes. But when the apostles Barnabas and Saul heard this, they tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you, and preach to you that you should turn from these useless things to the living God, who made heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that are in them, who in bygone generations has allowed nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he did not not leave himself without witness, in that he did good. He gave us rain from heaven in fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Whew. All the way down to verse 18. That's like a record for us. So, we've got a, um, a story that'll help us understand this story. Um, Ovid was a poet during the time of Augustus. So you're looking, you know, before Jesus was born, but, you know, only a, like a generation or two before this. And he wrote a, uh, a story about this area of Lystra in Phrygia, this, this area in, in Greece or in Turkey. Sorry, not Greece, but Turkey. And the way the story goes is that Zeus and Hermes entered this city. And when he entered this city, uh, they entered the city, the people gave them no hospitality. No one offered them a place to stay. No one offered them a place to eat or drink. And finally, this couple, which I believe their names were like Bacchus and Philemon, this old couple invites them in, a married couple, and they, they feed them, give them drink, and, and they realize that they're actually hosting the gods who had shown up in human form. They showed up wearing, you know, human bodies and were, you know, hiding their identity as being Zeus and Hermes. And Zeus and Hermes were so angry that the rest of the town was so inhospitable that they asked uh, Bacchus and Philemon to follow them up a mountain. And they climbed up to this mountain at the edge of the city and they watched as a flood came in and destroyed the city and killed all the people. And... They asked, you know, Bacchus and Philemon, what can we do to repay you guys for your hospitality? And they asked that they could be uh, priests uh, in the temple to Zeus and Hermes. And so their home was then magically turned into a temple there on the edge of the city. Here we find Paul and Barnabas walking into the city. And here on the edge of the city is this temple. Um, now, I'm not going to say that this story is true, the story of Zeus and Hermes, um, but it was a, a legend I think that people of the town enjoyed and, and, and many probably believed in. And so Barnabas traditionally was a huskier guy. He was a bigger guy, kind of like Peter. Paul has always traditionally been a small statured man, not all that big, but he had a big mouth, which would fit the description of the god Hermes. Hermes was the talker. Hermes was the messenger of the gods. He would go around and sh share the messages. And so while big Barnabas is there quiet, and here's little Paul doing all the talking, people think this must be Zeus and Hermes. And so you can maybe see then why 
the crowd like got all crazy and excited and wanted to uh, worship to them. And we see Paul and Barnabas freak out and say, whoa, do not worship us. Now, it's interesting because, again, we see in later church tradition, the saints like Paul and Barnabas becoming worshipped by people. You know what? All we see throughout the Bible is Paul and Barnabas here. What do they say? Men, why are you doing these things? We are also men with the same nature as you. Turn to the living God. Peter, when he walks into Cornelius' house, we saw that back at Acts chapter 10, Cornelius falls down and begins to worship Peter. Peter says, whoa, don't do that. Worship God. I am just a man like you. And then we see it in the book of Revelation, more than once where John falls down and begins to worship angels. And the angels say, whoa, you're embarrassing us in front of our boss. Don't do that. We're just servants of the same God. Worship God. And so, you know, it is easy to, to fall into the crutch of worshiping a, a pastor, a speaker, a, a really awesome religious person. Uh, we see people who are great mentors and they're, and they're great models. See, it'd be wrong to worship Paul, yet he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And so, there are people whom we can trust with all of our hearts in many ways. Okay, I'm not, you know, all our hearts might be a little extreme, but I would hope that there would be godly influences in your life whom you knew were fallible men just like you, but on the flip side, you knew you could trust them. And it's someone you could imitate as they imitate Christ. I think it is an overly spiritual and religious attitude when people are like, oh, well, just focus on Jesus. And it sounds like blasphemous to me to say that, but maybe follow me so I don't get misunderstood. You see, we all ought to just follow Jesus and have Jesus be our model. But I think God has put people in our lives who've made it a few steps further along that path of life who can help us be like Jesus. I don't think Paul was a blasphemer when he said to imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? And you later, there's a place where Paul actually talks about putting their faith in him and then Christ. And, and what he's talking about, not saving faith in Paul, but he was saying that people were able to look to him and get uh, you know, ideas and, and leadership and they, they knew how to behave and what to do, right? They, they saw Paul and it was someone walking the Christian faith that they could visibly see and follow so that they then too could walk in a similar manner and draw closer to Christ. And so he makes it really clear, you know, we got to throw away all this other garbage that we're worshiping and we need to worship the one true living God. We need to be careful that we never worship a person, but we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater if we don't think we cannot watch and observe godly people in our lives, model ourselves after them when we see that they are seemingly successfully following Christ. I just want to follow Jesus. But sometimes when I watch Billy Graham share the gospel, not just his preaching, but I like the one-on-one, -on -one. when you see him personally witnessing to an unbeliever, I feel like I, I, I get ideas that how I can better be like Christ because I'm watching a guy who did it so well. When I have seen the model of the prayer life of someone like George Mueller, I see, okay, that's how I can be more like Christ. You know, and he's someone who I haven't seen in the living, right? But I, I was able to read his books and understand more. And so let's find a balance, right? In fact, 
let's not get to this way or to that way, and let us do what 2 Timothy 2.15 says, and rightly divide the word of truth, so that we might not have to be a worker who has any shame. We don't have to be ashamed, as if we've gone way over here and become ashamed because we went way that way or we went way that way. But we learn to find that balance. I'm not going to worship people. I'm not going to worship a pastor. I'm going to do it because Christ wants me to and God wants me to and He is where all the glory and praise goes. But on the flip side, when you identify people whom you can trust and whom you believe have got a good thing going, we can imitate them as they imitate Christ and it'll be very advantageous and helpful and edifying as we try and do this Christian walk and this Christian life. So, there we have him going down to Lystra. He's going to move on from there. And it looks like Paul's going to get stoned on Monday. That's a fact. So, be here Monday morning, 7.30 a.m. And every day, Monday through Saturday, 7.30 a.m., we'll get together, we'll go through the Word of God, and we'll be doing this as a family, growing day by day, verse by verse. God bless you guys. Have an amazing weekend. Go to church and go with the intention of blessing someone when you're there. Love you guys. Take care.